So when I was younger, I used to, anything that happened to me, I would take out on someone else. I would blame everyone for everything that happened to me. This is gonna hurt. It's time, it's time for, the for the Suffering Podcast. Podcast. It's hard to bring you back from that. Yeah, and yeah, so, you know, I got sent away to this, this boarding school for two years. In Africa. In Africa. <laughs> sucked. <laughs> really sucked. And then uh, I came back. I came back two years later. Um, I was very strong because when I was in Africa, so so you you would think like I went to Africa and everything was like cool besides getting beat up by all the teachers, but I experienced a lot of racism there too. What part of Africa? In Nigeria. So I was in Nigeria and I experienced a lot of racism. Uh, so apparently I wasn't the real black and I wasn't the real black guy. And they used to make fun of me and they used to say, they used to call me the kid who eats butter. They try to say I'm soft. No. Yeah, so so I had to deal with this. So I spent a lot of time fighting there. I joined this thing called Man of War. And Man of War is like, it's like if you took Boy Scouts and you timed it by 10,000. <laughs> it's, it's like the closest into being to in the most militant army. Like they make you stand up and just fall like a tree. And I joined this thing, right, to get some respect. I had to do something to get some respect yeah. there because I was getting zero respect. I joined this. I became much stronger, you know. Bigger, and then I came back home two years later, and um, my 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 stepfather was grabbing my mom, and uh, your poor mother when you were in Africa, yeah. your poor mother. Listen, oh man, I she tell you, she had to take a beating. Yeah, it was crazy. It, it's just, I, I I never understood, you know. And then I come back, and 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 I want to try because I, I remember we were talking about something a little earlier. Uh, I had come back, and I and he started again with her. But this time I was a different kid. I wasn't that same yeah. little kid anymore. You know, I'd spend this whole time fighting. I joined this crazy army thing. And 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 he went to choke her by the throat. And when he grabbed her, I looked at him. I didn't even say anything. I just looked at him. That was, that was just a look. And I, and he turned around. And as soon as he saw me looking, immediately he goes, what are you looking at? You look over here, you're going to get the same thing. And I just lost it. Like I, I don't even remember running out of the house. All I know is I ran out the house because this time I didn't have any guns in my house. I had it at my friend's house. So I ran out the house. I went and got a gun, came back, put it to his head. And I was gonna I was gonna kill like that was the day. Like, cause you know That was it. Yeah. As a kid, when you watch this, it's a time bomb. Like you're gonna explode one day. And that was the day. And I came back. I was really gonna kill him. And then, you know, my mom's screaming, she's flipping out. His son's not around. And um my mom calls my mom calls the <laughs> my mom calls the police and she goes, Hey. You guys gotta hurry. My son's trying to kill my husband. And then I almost I put the gun to my mom's head. I was I, I was gonna kill I was gonna shoot both of them. It was it was really like I don't know, it's probably the and I've been in some intense things in my life where people have put guns to my heads or shot at me. This was the most intense ever in my life. Because, because you're fighting against rage too. Yes. You have so much fucking rage at that point, you're not thinking correctly. Yeah, and I remember I was shaking, I started crying because you know, all my life I try to protect my mom. And now I can do it. It's the first time that, you know, that I could step up and, and she just turned against me. Your and, it sounded like your mother has a, has a form of, of almost Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, so, I think so. So ba Stockholm, battered, battered woman syndrome. So almost. Stockholm syndrome is, if you look at Patty Hearst, she had Stockholm. Yeah. She gets kidnapped and then the, kidnap, the kidnappers assimilate them and then she becomes one of them and she ends up going to rob a bank with them. Where your mother had just been beaten down for so long that that's all she knew. That's normal to her. It's yeah. amazing what you get used to. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was crazy, man. But um, you know, something came on my shoulder, and and like I tell you, I was always a smart kid. I, I always, always a smart kid, and something just told me and said, "Hey, if you do this right now, right here, everything your stepfather said about you is gonna happen today. It yeah. will, you will probably be, be dead. Jail for the You'll be jailed for the rest of your life." At, at our worst parts, there is that one moment. Like you, can, I can pick out the one moment in my when things were at their absolute worst, and there was that pause, just like you're talking about. That pause, just to bring you back. One moment of clarity. That's all yeah. you need. That's all you need. Now, some people are never fortunate enough to have that moment of clarity, and they go ahead and they do the unthinkable, which would have brought your life into a far, far different oh, yeah. thing. You I probably mean, wouldn't be here now. <laughs> you wouldn't not. be sitting with us today. <laughs> had you not had that pause, and let's say you you didn't kill your your mother and your stepfather, had you not had that pause, what road do you think you were going down? Like your outlook on on life at that point, it would have been bad. I I, I would have definitely either 
wound up in jail for life or dead because so I don't have any friends that I grew up with when I was a kid. All my friends either probably dead or in jail. So all the friends I have are all new friends and those are people I, I was running with. So 100% I, I would, I would I, yeah, I wouldn't be here. I, I don't think I for sure because I, I think at that point I was just so enraged. It would have went to a di whole different level yeah. because I can see how, like, like, like you mentioned before, like that would be a cause to lose my humanity. You know, when you want to, all your life as a kid, you see your mom get beat up, you want to protect her. Now you have the chance to do it. And now is the time to do it. You know, not that your mom calls and says, hey, my husband and my son are fighting, come handle the situation, but says specifically, my son is trying to kill my husband. So... Well, I think yeah. I think that's a that's a young child thing because as a child we always try to toe that edge of the cliff to get the best view of what it looks like down at the bottom. Right, right. Right, and we try to get as close and close and close. And kids are fearless, and they get as close as they can. Some kids fall over, and we lose them. But then some kids just get just close enough where they see the danger of what the fall would be. Right, and that's when they back up and say, "I ain't doing that again." <laughs> and say, "Fuck that, man." I'm a... <laughs> now you you back up from that situation. What happens next? The police show up? No, I was already gone before the police showed up. <laughs> I, I was. You were a smart kid. I, yeah, I was really <laughs> smart. I, I was. I, I, I left, and then, um, but I, I got. I, I, I actually got. I wouldn't say I was arrested, but I, I got stopped and pulled into the station. I told him I said I never had a gun because there's no proof that I had a gun anyway. So I was like, that's not true. You know, my mom got beat up. My mom, you know, suffers from domestic violence. And so I just never went home. I, I spent a year living in the streets and things were getting really bad during that one year because now I didn't have a place to live because I was not going back to that place. What year, yeah. what year about is this? So at this, at this, age, at this time, uh, let me see, I was 14 when I left. I was 16. So I was 16 years old. Yeah, but what, when, what's the year around? Oh, man. Because I can't tell this how is, old you are, and I'm not even going to guess. I ain't telling you neither. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I, don't, I don't know exactly. Well, was this before, yeah. like, uh, was it the area you hung around? Was it yeah. in Brooklyn? Was Brooklyn, it, yeah. It Mar was Brooklyn. Okay. Marble Projects. Because, you know, they did a lot of renovations in New York. Oh, it's oh. very different now. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. the, the the New York has changed, and that's why I'm trying to get a, a, yeah, a lay of the land. Yeah, maybe 90s has got to be early. So it was before, like, Times Square got cleaned up by Julia. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it was definitely, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. Times Square is one of the places I used to hang out, hang out to. <laughs> and that, that's, that used to be, <laughs> geez, back then it was like, uh, I, I heard some people talking about it. You couldn't go out of the house without your wallet. Well, oh, yeah. your wallet, you'd get robbed. Oh, yeah. yeah. What people would do in Times Square... They would, uh, especially especially if you are, because uh, I, I did it with them, <laughs> especially if you were a foreigner, people would escort you to the ATM in the bank. They would escort you, especially especially the guys who did the, the, the like, like the, you know, the, the what do you call it there? The three card. The three card Monte. Monte. Those guys, like, you would have to be very careful because yeah. they would say, come on, we're going to the ATM and, and they take all your money. Wow, like, that's crazy. Like, Times Square was crazy, but, um, yeah. And it's like a tourist capital of the world, you know? Yeah. And, and they couldn't even clean it up back then. That's crazy. And then somehow, and this this still shocks me to this day, You <laughs> coming from where you came from to how the hell did you find <laughs> ping pong? Like, seriously, out of all the things and all the sports that you loved, right. why ping pong? <laughs> I used to smack people with paddles all the time. So, you know, I, I'm pretty good at this. Hey, that's hey. It's funny you said that. It's funny you said that I'm because on to something. that that's along the lines of what happened. So, um, I actually hated ping pong. I made fun of all the kids in my high school who played it. Like I bullied them all the time. So I hated the sport. Um, one day I was shooting pool at at this pool hall that had ping pong tables and wasn't interested at all. But I got upset. And I took my pool stick and shattered it. Oh no! And I didn't do it on purpose. I just hit it, and the pool stick shattered. And um, I had to on someone's head or on no, 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 on, 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 on the table. <laughs> and 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 I had to. So when I was younger, I used to anything that happened to me, I would take out on someone else. I would blame everyone for everything that happened to me. I could stub my toe, and I'm gonna find someone to take it out on. So. Of course, after I break my pool stick, I'm like really pissed off because this was a very expensive pool stick that I actually stole. 
So, <laughs> yeah. So I, I had I worked nice, hard to get that. Yeah, I did. Stick. I worked very hard to get it. So, you know, I, I'm angry now and I see some Asian kids playing ping pong. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go mess with these kids. So I go over there and I say, hey, I want to get a hit. And the guy goes, you play this? I was like, I don't play this. I just I just want to hit the ball. Just, just, just give me the racket. I take the racket from him. So the guy hits the ball to me. And the object, the idea was to hit him in the face with the ball. I was trying to hit him, right? Um, because, you know, if I just walked up to him and punched him, you know, we're on camera, you know, it wouldn't be a good look. So I tried to hit him with the ball, and the ball went on the table. And the kid goes, oh, my God, you're, you're, you're amazing. You play this? I was like, I don't play this, man. Because I was, I was getting pissed off now. The guy's thinking I'm good at ping pong. I was like, no, I don't play this. He was like, hey, there's a ping pong club that you have to go to. You got to check it out. Like, everyone's so good. They stand far from the table. And I was like, you're crazy. There's no place where people gather to play this. See, I'm a street this. kid, man. I, I go, I, I rob people. <laughs> exactly. I don't play ping pong. Come on. What's exactly. But, you know, uh, what happened was is the athlete in me, because I'm, you know, at that time, I was a big athlete and I love sports. And I was like, is there really a place where people play this? All right. So, so I said, let me go check it out. So I, I go and check out this place. I walk in. It's, it's a pool hall. That has about, I think I remember, maybe six ping pong tables. And when I walked in, people were playing, like playing, playing. And the thing that attracted me to the sport was that every single person that was playing was black. And I was like, wait a minute. Black people play this. <laughs> I was like, okay, this this is strange. Well, it's always like a, it was always like an Asian sport to me. You know? Well, that's yeah. what I thought. And yeah. I saw every person, you know, they 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 were either, you know from the islands or from Africa, from, you know, some other place. But nonetheless, they were black. And I was like, oh, maybe this sport is cool. So that's how I, that's how I first got interested. And I started trying to play. Nobody would play with me. Everyone was like, nah, that was really bad. Uh, I met some old guy who would play with me. I think at the time he was, he passed away. Uh, but I, th I think at the time he was like, I don't know, maybe in his late 50s, 60s. And the guy would crush me. And I would get so angry. And I'm, I'm like, how can this old guy beat me? You know, I'm a seasoned athlete. Before you go any further, I'm 56. Don't call us old guys. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, you know what I mean. By the time I was younger. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, this is crazy, man. So that made me want to play more because, like, this guy was just killing me. And um, eventually, uh, down the line, I meet an Israeli guy who comes up to me and says, hey, do you have a partner to play? And I says, uh, no, nah, not really. He goes, well, I'll pay you. $20 if you can be my steady partner because he's in and out of town and he wants to come and have someone to hit with. And at that time, I could hit. And I could hit forehands. I could hit okay. Um, and I said, yeah, of course. $20 was a hustle. you know. Because yeah. mind you, remember, I was like pretty much in the street. And I was like, yeah, $20. Let's go. And I would play with this guy. He would pay me $20 um, you know, every, every time we played. And then uh, you know, I became a little close with him. right? And, and I was always open about my life and like what I'm going through and the things I was going through, right? I just didn't care. I was like, you know, and um, but for him it was more like a TV show, right? Like if you if you don't know anyone who's lived that life or been in that life, it's very hard to 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 understand how you know a kid at 13 has guns, but it's really easy. It's not difficult. It, it's something that's like when people tell me say, oh yeah, oh, yeah, I know, right? So for him it was more like a TV show. So. He was uh, listening, but he wasn't hearing. And then uh, one day I went to the club. A 22 fell out of my bag and uh, he saw it. He looked at me. I looked at him and uh, <laughs> he had this look on his face and it was almost like, I still remember it till today. It was like all the puzzle pieces had just clicked together. And he gave me this look and I was like, yo, I'm out. Because I don't know what he's going to do. He yeah. didn't call police. I don't know what he's going to do. So I left. I thought, well, you know, there goes my $20. I'm never going to see this guy again. Okay, whatever. And he calls me two days later. And he says, hey, um, are we still playing? And I was like, all right, let this, yeah, I guess. So I go meet him. We play. And then the guy goes to me, hey, I want to invite you to my house. I was like, okay, that's weird. Yeah, that's because, a little odd. Right? Like you just saw a gun fall in my bag. You want to bring me to your house where your family's at? Not to mention his house was near Hunter Mountain, which is two and a half hours away from New York City. In the woods, and yeah. I'm like, this guy's in the... well, so he's got some kind of intention. Yeah, or yeah. I was like, what's going on? So I wind up going with him, meeting his family. You know, they they uh, his family lived up there all the time. He was in New York, there in Israel, and um, 
I played ping pong with them and, and, you know, ate with them. And I think he wanted to show me what family was, like what real family was. He was your custom auto. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. exactly, And and then he tells me, he says, hey, um, I really want to help you. Because at that time I was really interested in ping pong. He's like, I I really want to help you. I have a connection in Germany and I'm going to pay for you to go to Germany to learn ping pong. And I was like, what? Didn't you, now coming from where you, you came from, did you think there was an ulterior motive? Because I'm sure oh, yeah. in, in the neighborhood yeah. that you grew up in, nobody did. No, nobody gave you no, stuff. No, 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 no. Did I you would, think he was like, you know, he's little, maybe he was into you? I thought yeah. in the beginning when he was, when he was telling me, uh, I, want to, I want to invite you to my home. I was like, what do you mean invite me to, to your home? He's like, oh, to meet my family. So when he said to meet my family, I was like, but even, even then I was still like, okay, that's weary. weird. Like, yeah. why would you bring... A kid, like, you should be running far away from me, not, like, trying to get closer to me. Especially seeing a gun fall out of your bag. Yeah, so it was kind of weird, man. And you know what's funny? You know what the craziest thing about this is? The craziest thing is that he never mentioned that gun that fell out of my bag. Really? It it never, because, I don't know, I don't know if he did it on purpose, not mention it, or if he just never did. Because if he would have mentioned it, I would have never talked to him again. Yeah. I'd probably still been in the same situation. Or maybe is there a possibility that this guy understood? I am. I, I, I was, yeah, I guess. I'm still trying to figure that right, out. Right now, apparently, to me, it sounds like the guy just had a big heart and he saw something in you and wanted to help you out. Like if I if I saw, I, I grew up in a house full of abuse, and if I saw a kid, and it's, it, it kind of helps me out when I coach young kids, if I see a kid that's acting a certain way, I sort of, I won't say nothing to him, but I'll look at him. I might spend a little extra time with him because I know what he's going through at home. Or if the kid is misbehaving in a certain way or doesn't listen in a certain way because I understand it. it, it I'm, I'm, from, I'm an outsider looking in on this situation, and I see this guy taking an interest in you in a certain way. It might be him, his way of paying something forward that happened to him. That that's the other thing I was gonna say. Did something happen to him? Oh, where... I never even thought about that. Yeah, yeah that, that's the first time. I... That's why we brought that's you in. We're trying to learn your stuff here. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> the first time that learn. ever came up. That's yeah. the first time that ever came up. I never even never even thought about that. Yeah, he could have had something in his childhood where he just you know saw something in you that maybe he saw him himself as a child. Not all Israelis are you know they're military people <laughs> going at the Wailing Wall. I know some some true blue criminal Israelis. Right, I, right. I know them. And they they deal with some stuff. If he was a true Israeli, they deal with some stuff that that we that the cameras never show and never see. Right, right. So maybe it's a possibility where he was heading down that path and saw you in a similar situation. And you know, those are those are the important people that we need to pay attention to in our life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Do you still keep in contact with him? So I lost contact with him like many years ago when Israel had that big war. So, um, and then we've been trying, to, we, we spent a lot of time to try to find him because we made a film um, not that long ago, maybe like three years ago, um, documentary about uh, these ping pong tables I put in Bryant Park. And uh, as part of the film, we wanted to find this guy that would so great. that we could, it, it could tie into the story about, look, what you did. Do you want to shout out me. his name? See if he's out there? I mean, uh, hey, listen. I don't so- know his last name, but his first name is Alec. His first name is Alec. And it took me many years to remember his first name, actually. You know, so, I think there's maybe only one Israeli name Alec out there. So maybe... <laughs> yeah, well, maybe maybe about listening. what age would, would Alec be? Now, oh, man, maybe... He's got to be in his 70s. 70s. Yeah. So if anybody knows an Israeli gentleman, about 70 years old, first name Alec... That lives near Hunter Mountain? Yes, yeah, that lives <laughs> like across the street from Hunter. <laughs> that, that, you know, please reach out to us. There's somebody out there that's going to listen to this or maybe watch one of your TikToks right, and, right. And, and know this person. So, but you the, know. I just want to get back to... You did go to Germany? Yeah, yeah, I went. I, I, he sent me. I, I, he didn't go with oh, me. Oh, he just sent you on your own. Yeah, yeah. He paid everything. Everything was paid for. Um, I, I lived in a school with like the top athletes of different sports, so not just ping pong. Yeah. I went there for ping pong, but I lived in in, in a school with like the best athletes. But even then, it, it. I mean, just just because you take a kid out out of where he's from and put him, stick him in somewhere, doesn't mean that I changed. Yeah. Like I was still this violent kid. You still got street in you. Yeah, and then I, w- I was still this, this violent kid. And if not, even a little bit more because I, I didn't know any of these kids and everyone. But the thing was, you know, everyone was was always being extra nice. You know, oh, you're from America. Oh, you're so cool, blah, blah, blah. So 
it took me a little while to adjust because I didn't know how to. Yeah. I'm not used to that. Like, you you know, everyone was just genuinely, ah, oh, man, you're cool. You're from New York and, and this and that. And, and you know, there's a, a, a thing they call, it's called killing you with kindness, right? Yeah. So that's what happened. You know, it's a real thing. I, I became confused. I didn't know how to react. 